kind of cinema that I like the most and that moves me and inspires me is the cinema that takes risks, that doesn't know if the audience will be happy about it or how they will feel. Also, there's a cinema that is so personal that I also love. And cinema that tries to expand the definition of cinema language or redefine what cinema is. This filmmaker, Kirsten Johnson, I think she fits in these definitions that I'm giving you perfectly. So I would like to talk to you a little bit about her work. Some of the ideas that I've gathered from some masterclasses that I've watched, some interviews, and these ideas are how cinema is about relationships, how cinema reveals, and how cinema is about you. At the same time, I want to share a little bit about her work and some personal thoughts about it. So just to start off, I will tell you, Kirsten Johnson is a documentary director, but she's also a cinematographer, and she has a huge list of credits as a cinematographer. Actually, the oldest short film that I was able to find of her is The Above. And The Above is a film that she shot in Afghanistan. I feel it was in the Middle East. In this film, she remembers that she had this idea when she was younger as a child. And she heard that God knows your thoughts. And she felt this feeling of being observed and being watched. And even though she's not a believer anymore, she was able to bring this idea, which was very important to her at some point, and put it in this short film because she was shooting for other directors when she found there was a blimp on the sky in this city. So she started shooting the blimp from close, from far, asking questions to people. And we can see how her idea of surveillance or being observed, how we act when we are under the eyes of other, other beings, started to appear in the middle of this short film. And at the same time, we learned that she did this personal project in the middle of shooting for other people. So personal projects are incredibly important and they allow you to really figure out your own personal voice. Cinema is a relationship. That's something that Kirsten Johnson talks again and again in interviews or in master classes. Whenever you have a camera in your hands, you are in a position of power. You decide the subject that you will point that camera to. You decide how you shoot it. You decide the reasons why you are shooting. And some of the things that you need to ask yourself is, why is this person letting me film them? Why or what do they expect? Or how does that change over time as I film them? What things they want to hide from me or what things they want to hide, but still they will appear whenever I shoot them. Or what if when I'm shooting them, something that they're trying to hide appears and that element is so important for the story that I'm crafting, this film that I'm making. Should I betray their trust? Or should I just not use that piece of footage? Whenever we're shooting documentaries, we are dealing with this complex uh, area, which is entering other people's lives. And that in itself is full of ethical questions. What is good? What is not good? What are the limits? What's the risk? But we have to really figure out how, what's our position or how far we can go, or how uncomfortable are we willing to be. There's Michael Verdi, another director that I really, really admire, who said that documentary and fiction cinema is pretty much the same right now. I mean, you can have non-actors in fiction films or actors in documentary films. You can use the same shooting techniques, editing techniques, but perhaps the thing that makes documentary still something different is this moral obligation or the responsibility of the filmmaker of portraying the subjects in a very honest way. So there's this idea of representation or the images that we're making and the weight that they will carry that we should very much be aware of. 
how are we portraying these people? How are we portraying these ideas? After making this short film that I'm telling you about the above, Kirsten Johnson went ahead and did a film called Camera Person. And Camera Person, I believe it was intended to be a memoir of footage that she had shot over the course of her life of different projects. But something very interesting started to happen. She started to find herself in the footage that she had shot for other projects. Maybe things that she said behind the camera or how you could feel the tension whenever she was holding it in a very stressful situation or how she approached the subjects whenever she was asking uncomfortable or difficult questions. I feel like maybe this started a little bit as an experiment, but you see images one after the other one and you start to notice connections. At the same time, you can see the connection of the subject in front of the camera with the person behind the camera and you start to see that there's some beauty in there. The way that Kirsten Johnson tries to understand her subjects and has and tries to approach them and at the same time capture life as it's happening, I think it's so beautiful, it's so poetic. And the film is, I mean, it doesn't follow the conventional structure, but is rather an exploration of beauty in the middle of darkness, of a little bit of light whenever there seemed to be no hope. And I think that I was able to identify so much with this film, even though I'm just a wedding videographer, you know, I, I just deal with, yes, with life of people in their wedding day, which is normally a happy day, but there's also so many emotions. But I was able to identify so much with camera person, this film, because of the way that she allows her emotion and her hesitance appear sometimes in the footage. Those little accidents, those decisions that she's super stressed or that she doesn't know what to do, you can feel them as well. So through all of this, I want to mention that Christian Johnson talks a lot about how cinema reveals. Not only it reveals things that are hidden, ideas that you want to bring to the world, but it also reveals both your subject and yourself. It reveals so much of your own point of view, of your own perspective. We are filming our curiosity. We are filming with intention, but yes, we don't know our intention a lot of times, or maybe we think we know, but the best work appears when you start to figure out your intention as you start shooting more. And we can see that in this film, Camera Person, how maybe the scene would start in a way that she had planned. Maybe the person would start answering a question that she was expecting the answer for. But the answer kind of went in a totally different direction and you can still feel the reaction for, from Kirsten Johnson. You know how cinema started to reveal things that she was not even expecting or the decisions that she has to take in a half a second, you know. I think it's so beautiful, so incredible. And instead of running away from this that cinema is revealing you, I think that what makes Kirsten Johnson's work really, really stand out is that she decided to embrace this element. So her cinema is not so much about a structure or a story or characters. I mean, yeah, the subjects are the essence of it. But behind it all, there's all of this questions that she has and all of these contradictions and all of this mystery in her mind and it allows her work allows you to to go inside this place of not knowing exactly what's going on and that's where the last film that she did appeared dick johnson is dead such a personal film she decided to shoot her father after he was diagnosed with Alzheimer and she realizes that she will lose her dad. So instead of feeling super depressed or trying to make a very dark film, she tries to tackle the subject under a humorous light, which is let's try to 
kill my father in many different ways and make a film about it. So <laughs> this thing already is a little bit questionable. Is it correct? Is it not? But she went ahead and she started shooting him dying in many different ways. And the entire film starts like that. You know, you, you, you start to see how he, the father dies, then, oh no, it was just part of the film and the father dies. Or how are we going to do it? And he, then he dies. Then it's part. But as the film progresses, the reality of the father being sick and of the father being old and of him actually getting closer to this time that the film is kind, kind of trying to run away from starts to appear more and more. And there comes a point where you don't know exactly what are you watching, if it's real or if it's not real. Should you laugh or should you not laugh? Or should you cry or are they just lying to you that they, what's happening? It's, it has no reason to, to, to cry about. I feel like the element that appeared in her previous film of her appearing behind the camera a little bit, she totally decided to embrace it and go full on with Dick Johnson is there. And for me, this piece is, is totally a masterpiece, truly, it's incredible. And the way that she uses cinema language to expand her idea or to explore some of the questions that she had and some of this pain and at the same time expose all of the beauty of the life of her father and the complexity of it. And also the complexity of Alzheimer's as a disease, you know, it's, it's, I think it's so special, so unique, so many lessons from this film, something that comes through Kirsten Johnson's work again and again is that cinema is about you. Don't run from it. Just embrace it. Just accept it. Make films that are close to you. Films that allow you to figure out who you are or films that illustrate the complexity of your own thoughts or of your own life. And under this light, film the life around you. Put those questions out there. I remember there's this photographer, Daniel Arnold, and he is a street shooter. He also shoots documentary work in the streets. And one of the things that he has mentioned is that sometimes you see scenes or moments that you are not sure if you should shoot or not, if it's correct or if it's not correct. But if you decide to shoot that, many times those are the best pictures because they are so full of questions and they are really pushing the boundaries. And I feel like the same is valid in observational documentary filmmaking or in cinema in general, trying to maybe not be totally sure about what you are filming or if it's good or not, or if it's correct or not, but don't run away from it. Just, just, be willing to take risks. One of the things that really revolutionized my thinking when I was shooting weddings was allowing all of this reality to appear and at the same time being willing to shoot all the things that in a different time or just trying to follow the formulas or the trends I would have never shot because it didn't fit the edit or it didn't feel, fit the film that I was trying to make. So trying to get a better understanding of the situations. And in my case, I also have shot a lot in China, which is a place where there's a totally different culture and language that I don't speak. Trying to read the people emotionally as life is happening and in the middle of stressful situations or happy situations and trying to take decisions in this place of uncertainty, many times not being sure what's going on, not being sure if I'm still allowed to film here or not. But I'm telling you, of course, my thing is just so simple compared to being shooting in the middle of a war or trying to interview somebody that suffered from something very, very heavy in their life. And still, I feel like 
I am still able to see some of the complexity of life and emotions and relationships with what I do. So there's no excuse how small or how big your project is or wherever you are. If you have a camera, if you have a phone that can shoot, I encourage you to use this as an exploration of yourself and also as an exploration of life and trying to understand all of this beauty around us and doing something with it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have some more thoughts about Kirsten Johnson, I would love to hear from you. Just leave some comments. Or if you are interested in listening more conversations about other directors that I like, just let me know and I will continue making videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.